Well, thanks so much for inviting uh, Maura and I. I wanted to introduce myself. I'm Lynn Ellis. I live in Brunswick, and I'm currently the legislative lead for Moms Demand Action in Maine. Uh, I also am a member of the gun safe, the brand new Gun Safety Caucus, which Maura will talk about in a little bit. And uh, we're working hard on gun safety legislation. Hi everyone, I'm Maura Pillsbury. Um, I live in Freeport. I'm also a Moms Demand Action volunteer and I was the legislative lead in the 129th legislature. And I'm currently um, a member of the legislative team and the Gun Safety Caucus like Lynn. And thank you so much for having us. Great. So I wanted to start the program today for those who might not know what Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America is a nonpartisan grassroots movement working to reduce all forms of gun violence throughout the US. We are part of Every Town for Gun Safety, the largest gun violence prevention organization in America with 6 million supporters across the country. We are strategic in our work supporting evidence-based strategies to reduce gun violence in all its forms. We are a multifaceted organization that combats gun violence at the local, state, and national level as well as advancing cultural shifts, supporting gun safety. And while we were founded by Shannon Watts, a mom, we are made up of moms, dads, uncles, sisters, anyone and everyone focused on reducing gun violence in America. And I will mention that we are uh, so grateful to Maine Veterans for Peace who are uh, a number of members are part of our group and support us as allies in this movement. So we're grateful for that. Um, so now Maura was gonna to speak to you a little bit about the Gun Safety Caucus. Sure, thanks Lynn. So um, as you may be aware, we've faced an uphill battle in Maine passing um, gun reform and um, new gun safety laws um, despite the deaths that we have here, um, including high uh, suicide rate by gun. So um, this year, we're really excited to be participating in a Maine's first ever gun safety caucus. Um, the lead of the caucus is Representative Vicki Judera from Camden, and um, there are several legislators participating. And so we have an opportunity, along with other um, organizations, including Maine Gun Safety Coalition, to get together with legislators and talk about the bills that they're putting forward this, um, this session for the 130th legislature. Um, as I mentioned in the 129th, um, when I was legislative lead, we had a real uphill battle. There are 11 gun safety bills introduced and none of them passed, including really common sense reforms like um, uh, child access prevention, or I believe at the time it was called safe storage. So that bill's back again this session um, in a little bit different form. And Lynn will talk about that and what the bills are, but we're really excited to be a part of this caucus um, this year. And it also allows us to you know, obtain information from directly from the legislators that we can pass on to you about what's going on, what bills are coming up, and um, what uh, what those bills would really do if they were enacted. I think currently we're at uh, 42 <laughs> legislators, uh, 36 representatives and six senators and about a dozen supporters like Maura and myself. So I wanted to bring the screen up from our everytown.org site. The, uh, so why, why are we looking at gun safety legislation in Maine? And uh, as you can see, on average, we have about 152 deaths by guns in Maine and 90% of those deaths are suicides. And if you look at this next slide, you can see the, the ones that are checked in blue are laws that we do have and all the ones with the red X we do not have. So some of these, bills we are working on this legislative session, and I'll be going through them very quickly, uh, shortly. Uh, we do, I'll just mention, we, there is a new, there is a bill that wants to overturn the stand your ground law. Uh, we'll be looking at that closely. Uh, no one wants that bill here in Maine. Uh, I don't, we don't have either of the first two in legislation and you know, we certainly are looking at other bills that provide safety measures. 
so often um, Maine is characterized as a really safe state and, and a lot of the pushback we get is that we don't need gun laws. We, um, we have a low uh, rate of violence in the state. And the fact is like you showed Lynn that we have a high rate of gun suicide and uh, gun suicide we do consider to be to be gun violence, it's a it's a violent act, and it's something that uh, is a lot more deadly. Um, suicide by gun is a lot more deadly than suicide by other methods, and um, you know, frankly, we consider that to be one of our um, main concerns in Maine is the high rate of gun uh, death by suicide, and we also have um, a high rate of gun violence by domestic violence. So. Those are those are very serious issues, and you know, although Maine may have a low rate of gun homicide, we consider the impact on the community of every single gun death and also every single gun injury. You know, it's devastating to a family and, and to small Maine communities when these kinds of events occur, when a child gets a hold of a gun um, and and harms somebody. The impact of that, even if it's not a number, you know, even if we don't have a high number of gun homicides. Um, the impact of that is devastating and it ripples across families and communities in Maine. So um, I think the argument that Maine is safe doesn't mean we don't and can't take action to protect Mainers from gun violence. So this is courtesy of Maine Gun Sof Safety Coalition of which we partner in Maine on um, gun safety legislation. So in the 129th legislation, legislative session we had, there were 11 gun bills uh, both good and what we call bad uh, bills. Bad bills are bills that would actually make us less safe than more safe. Uh, and this session, there are at least 16 bills, 11 of them relatively good at looking at creating more safe legislation and, and a, a six or seven that are not. So um, these bills here, um, are some of the bills that we're looking at. I can tell you that uh, Moms Demand Action is looking to support LD 759, LD 805, uh, L, LR 1945 and LR 1595. Those two don't have a bill title yet. Uh, so those are a couple. Um, Here's some that will decrease safety. As I mentioned earlier, the stand your ground bill and a couple of bills are being put in to uh, challenge the governor's authority during a pandemic. And I think you probably remember there was a time early on when she was identifying essential versus non-essential businesses. And for a period of time, she had listed gun shops where you can gun sale shops uh, as non-essential and there was some pushback on that. So there are a couple of bills that were introduced to challenge that. And um, so this, uh, I'll just go through quickly. This is uh, Representative Duderre's bill on clarifying the definition of machine gun to include bump stocks, which is a federal law at the moment. And we wanna, uh, bring this to Maine to include the word bump stocks so that our law is in parallel to the federal law. Uh, this LR 1945, an act to prohibit untraceable and undetectable firearms. Uh, many of you may be familiar that this is what are called 3D guns or ghost guns. You can actually print gun parts on a 3D printer, assemble them, and then with a little bit of manipulation, you can make them into a weapon. And there are, they don't, uh, they pass through security because there are no metal parts. And so we, we definitely are supporting this bill in Maine. And as of the moment, it doesn't have, a, hasn't been printed, but we expect to see this one soon. Um, 1595 is, a bill sponsored by Representative Lori Gramlich. And basically she wants the state to be more transparent about what guns, uh, gun deaths are happening in Maine, what types and, and keep, uh, keep that data available to all of us so that we can look at it more succinctly. Uh, LD805 is another bill that Moms Demand Action is supporting as a priority. 
And this bill is coming up for a public hearing on, on Monday, April 12th at 10 a.m. And so many of us will be testifying for this bill. And basically it, it um, has to do with that, the aspect of people showing up at polling places where we're, we go to do our civic duty to vote. And because Maine has an open carry law, uh, gun owners are allowed to do that, but we find it very intimidating and we are fearful that people will stop voting in, in the way that they are entitled. And so Senator Kathy Green has introduced this bill and we're hoping that this will pass. Uh, this is another bill, LD 759, an act to amend the child endangerment laws to include certain unauthorized access to loaded firearms. Basically, this is taking existing statute and adding firearms to it so that people, uh, if people leave uh, their firearms accessible to children, that it becomes a, a crime. Uh, LD 999 is act regarding background checks. We have had uh, little success in past sessions passing a background check bill. There's quite a bit of pushback on this. I don't know where this is gonna go this year. I guess we'll stop there uh, with, the, with there's, there's a lot of bills, a um, lot to go over and we can certainly get that information to you should you need it. Uh, so I think I'll stop there for a moment um, before we tell you how you can get involved is, are there any questions from anyone about what we've presented so far? Yeah, the only restricted places are, are uh, public places like the State House, the, uh, some schools. Uh, Maura, can you weigh in on other areas where you're not allowed to carry a firearm? Yeah, sure. Sorry, I think I turned off my spotlight. Um, I think that pretty much sums it up, Lynn. Uh, schools, public schools, um, I'm not sure about private schools, but uh, a lot of polling places are at schools. So that would, you know, of course, if you're polling places in a school, you're not allowed to bring a gun into the school. Um, but some polling places are not, you know, like uh, the next town over from us, I know their polling place has been like the AMBETS Hall. So you are allowed to open or concealed carry at a polling place. Um, you are allowed to open or concealed carry to a town meeting and some, you know, some laws have been introduced to change those things and this is another one of them. And there is another bill that hasn't come out yet that Representative Reisman has put in, which expands this to include more public spaces like meeting places. So I expect that the committee that hears this will combine the two. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I know that this LD805 is going to public hearing soon. So uh, I'm not sure what's gonna happen with that. Um, another another uh, bill that I forgot to mention is LD 1068, which is going to be at a public hearing in the Judiciary Committee on Tuesday next week at 10 o'clock. And that's um, an act to restrict access to weapons pursuant to court order in cases of harassment. And somebody asked me the other day, well, will, will this bill apply to people who bring firearms to a public place? Is that considered harassment? And in fact, it isn't because of the uh, nature of our laws in Maine. However, what this bill would do is, uh, maybe you remember last session, we tried to pass a red flag bill, extreme risk protection order. We don't believe that that would have success passing in this current legislature. So Senator Carney has put in this bill, which basically allows law enforcement and people who are concerned, who are being harassed, especially if there's risk of firearm, to have the, that person would have to relinquish their firearms uh, until they were given a hearing. And uh, um, so that, that bill's coming up next week. So any other questions? Being a novice, uh, the technical stuff around this does this any i know that most of this uh, is uh, directed toward maine is that correct i mean it's not national laws 
Well, what we're talking about today is the is the state legislation. Uh, Moms Demand Action is also engaged in federal legislation. In fact, right now we are encouraging people to contact Senator Collins because there are several bills in Congress that passed the House that will be going to the Senate that we would like Senator Collins as a Republican to vote for. As you know, if we don't get 10 Republicans in the Senate to pass these gun safety bills, they won't, they won't go anywhere. So Senator Collins is one that we're looking at to try to pass some of the federal legislation. So, so the answer is yes, we do both, but uh, Moore and I primarily work on the state legislation. I am going to now move into the uh, ways that you can get involved. So Moms Demand Action right now has a postcard campaign. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit on those bills that we talked about. Uh, so what we're doing is if you sign up and there is a link, well, it's in a different slide, but if you sign up with our postcard campaign, we're asking you to send four postcards every week. We designate which bill we're asking you to write your representatives to. And so right now this week, we're looking at LD805, which as I said, is going to the committee uh, on April 12th to the state and local government committee. So we give you the means to look up who's a part of that committee. If your representative is on there, we ask you to send a postcard to, to him or her. If they're not, we ask you to send a postcard to each of the chairs of that committee, and then also one to the governor. And we ask you to be positive, to, we'll give you some talking points and ways that you can speak to the legislators on this issue. And then we'll have a postcard action every every week or so on bills that are coming up. As I said, we, we did LD 759 last, uh, 10 days ago, but we'll probably continue to do that as more people sign up with this, this campaign. And if you'd like to join us in that effort, that would be wonderful. Uh, it's pretty easy. All you have to do is sign up and we'll send you all the information. I'll deliver the postcards to you and, uh, and you go from there. Uh, we're also, as I said, we're collaborating with Maine Gun Safety Coalition which also has a um, action, which is called the Show Up Network. And in this uh, organization, they're asking people to testify at the public hearings. And so I'm gonna pull that up. Um, that's an effort through the Maine Gun Safety Coalition. Um, in the past, some of the pushback that we've heard from legislators is that they hear very strongly from gun rights groups. Um, they're very vocal. They're often single issue voters and this issue gets them very motivated. And you know, for us, we, um, we may have a lot of issues that we really care deeply about. We may care about the environment, we care about guns. Um, and so our attention attends, tends to be more divided. So this is an effort to try to get folks um, folks like us to show up and make our voices heard because often the gun lobby turns out hundreds of you know people in Maine who are opposing this legislation. Right, so the, the one of the things that's really wonderful about the Gun Safety Caucus this year is that legislator, we meet every two weeks and legislators talk about their own bill, what they think is needed if they need more people to testify. Uh, most of the gun bills are going to the Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee, which is uh, honestly a tough committee. Uh, some of the committees like Judiciary, we have quite a number of gun safety allies on as far as legislation. So uh, that's gonna be a, a, a less difficult committee to maneuver through. And as Maura said earlier, we. We did not have success in 129 with passing gun safety legislation. <clears throat> and this was not re uh, resisted by just Republicans, but also some of our Democratic 
legislators. So we're working really hard to try to change that scenario in Maine. And so your participation in things like the postcard campaign and the um, Sun Network, if you really like to testify and uh, so I'm putting the link to that in the chat as well and how you sign up. And if you do that, then Nicole Palmer of Maine Gun Safety Coalition will get in touch with you. Um, so those are the two basic ways to be involved. You can also become a member of Moms Demand Action. Uh, and you can, so you can text the word JOIN, J-O-I-N, 64433. And then you will get everything you could possibly want and ways to get involved with Moms Demand Action. And uh, I wanted to mention, you can also text checks to 64433. And to Dan's point, that will um, prompt you, you'll get a call back to call Senator Collins to ask her to support HR8, which is the, uh, the primary bill that we're focusing on at the federal level right now, which is a federal background check law. So that would be, again, checks, the word checks to 64433. And I just learned yesterday that uh, every town, our national organization is bringing, doing a, a federal legislation banner across the country. And they're starting in Maine on Tuesday. That banner will be at Tommy's Park in Portland. And there will be a few speakers. Uh, we can also put in the chat, the Moms Demand Action Maine Facebook group. You will need to join um, text join to 64433, or if you don't text, we could always also give a form. So you have to sign up as a volunteer. Um, that doesn't mean you necessarily have to do anything, but we want folks to sign up before you join our Facebook group. Um, and in that group, there is more information on the event that Lynn mentioned. You would be able to see that in there. Sure. So. Do, you, do you have that Facebook link to put in, uh, Maura? Let me grab it. Okay, I don't have it readily available. And, you can request to join, and then as soon as you fill out the volunteer form, they'll let you in. We just screen who asks to join the group. I'm really struck by the amount of detail that you all have absorbed, and it's just such a uh, really inspiring to know that some of you are out there paying close attention, and um, that's such a help to those of us that aren't to know that something's that we're going to find out by email or or Facebook um, what we can do because it's a very helpless feeling. So I'm very grateful to you and Maura and others that are working on this. And I do get emails from Moms Demand Action. And so I would get um, an, an email from you, I'm sure that said, now is the time to focus, they're focusing on this bill or that bill. Um, so that would refresh what you've been talking about today. Is that true? You will get some of that. Uh, you're, you're more likely to get that information if you sign up with the Sun Network, which again, I put in the chat. Uh, moms in every way supports gun safety legislation. We're prioritizing a handful of bills. So we mm -hmm. will be sending out information less often. Uh, if you okay. get involved with the postcard campaign, that will certainly, you'll get emails that I, on that. Yeah. I did sign up for that. So I'll hope to be hearing from you about it. You will definitely. Okay. I, I'm the keeper of the postcards. So All right. I have been delivering them around the state. Uh, although I have to say, I didn't go to Aroostook County. Oh my golly. Oh my God. Delivery. Oh. Um, and as we know with the legislature this year, this been, it's been a, a, a slow start, but it's taking off. Uh, bills are showing up in committee, but in droves now. So it's going to get busy fast. Um, so all the help we can get is appreciated. Um, before we wrap up, I just want to mention, um, I know this is a session on state legislative um, bills, but um, Moms Demand Action also has a nonprofit arm where we do gun safety education. So this is our advocacy, um, our advocacy and political action arm. Um, but we also do um, 
uh, education around safe storage, especially of guns to protect children. And we have um, that organization is Be Smart and you can find more information at besmartforkids.org. And we do presentations in the community um, encouraging parents to safely store their firearms. So um, that's something feel free to share. And we're always happy to come and, and do presentations and raise awareness about how to protect children and communities um, from uh, gun access uh, to, to kids. Um, unsupervised. I mean, as we know, there was an unintentional shooting in Waterville of a, a two-year-old, and I'm happy to say through Maura's efforts and, and some others in Waterville that there will be some more education on safe storage happening in Waterville. Yeah. So this is where we can take our message and get actually involved and do. We're not just a political advocacy group, we're also education, education, education. And, and we, Maura and I have spoken at many places over the years um, when we were able to do that in person before COVID, um, we'll do it again. Um, I think that was the end of what I had prepared today. I, I did want to end with a quote. I think it's really important to recognize why we do this work. Uh, there have been over 10,000 gun deaths since January 1st, 2021. 119 mass shootings across the country uh, since January 1st, 2021. None of these are school shootings, thankfully. However, the media does not present all of the mass shootings. They pick and choose which ones they want to. I was made aware that there was the one in the mass shooting in Southern California. Uh, and then this very same day, there was another shooting that was not mentioned at all. Um, so, there are ways to find out this information through gun violence archives, I think it is. Uh, every day they update it, uh, but 10, 000, over 10,000 deaths. This is a crisis, health crisis. This is a public health crisis. Uh, gun violence is a leading cause of death in young children. And it's certainly with the numbers in Maine of suicide, gun suicides by firearm, this is a huge issue for us in Maine as well. So I, I don't know the author of this quote, but I do like it. Um, and it is, there are times when there is so much darkness, so much hate and anger and so much hopelessness that we can barely breathe, much less make sense of it. It is as if darkest of all clouds has finally prevailed and we feel helpless and afraid. During these times, we must open our hearts and our arms and remind ourselves and each other that there are more candles than guns, more love than hate, and much more light, stronger, brighter, and more powerful than any evil or danger that may swirl around us. And at the darkest moments, we must, through our thoughts, prayers, and actions, remind each other of the ultimate truth that light, hope, and most of all love always wins.